Okay, Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. Uh, before we get underway with a recap of the overall markets, uh, let me one welcome you. So welcome for the first time or welcome back. If you're returning, uh, do us a solid in the comment section. Just drop us a comment, say hi. Let you know what you thought about my, uh, pardon, let me know what you thought about my analysis or generally speaking, anything you wanna share. Again, just comment in the comment section. And also, too, happy Wednesday. Today is hump day. So you are in the middle of the week, right? Two more days and the weekend is upon you. So keep going. All right. So right now on your screen is the SPY, S&P 500 daily chart, dating back to around 2017. So what happened in the market today? It seems as though the day started off a little bit shaky, a little bit rocky. We pulled back, right? We pulled back to that breakout base of 293 to 295. The low of today clocked in at 294.33. We got that bounce. So once resistance of 293 to 295 is now functioning as support. Remember, we broke out back in our early September. And although we've pulled back to this breakout base, we've still managed to sustain that break, at least so far. So we closed at 297.61. We had a bit of a midday to late day rally. Great again, up about 0.59% on the day. The high of today clocked at 298.11, so we close on many respects close to today's high, so that's good. Once again, obviously on deck, two things. Um, one notably is whether or not we can hold that 293 to 295 uh, mark, which again was once resistance. You can see it served the resistance uh, definitely in October. And for the most part, uh, the latter part, not the latter, but for the uh, past two years it served as uh, resistance. Now uh, it's acting as support. So we retested that support area today. We got the bounce and then we rallied uh, to close at 297.61. So I'm paying attention to obviously that level, 293 to 295. And I'm also paying two all-time highs of 302.63. Um, if we can remain above 293 to 295, I'm pretty sure the next step in the market would be to at minimum retest uh, those highs, right? So that's what I'm paying attention to uh, for the remaining of the third quarter heading into the uh, fourth quarter. What else? All right, and then this is the IWM daily chart dating back to our April of 2019. So again, about, uh, what is that? Five months worth of data. The IWM fared a bit well today, right? We're up about uh, 1%, a little bit over 1% on the day. I see a close here of 154.07. So yesterday, yesterday, not too concerned, but a little alarming because I had drawn this line, right? matching it to this line here. And I said, you know what, for things to look relatively bullish, then the IWM really needs to kind of remain above that 153 mark. So yesterday we actually penetrated and blew through that going as low as 151.84 and actually closed below 153. We closed at 152.43. And I said to myself, well, let's see what happens today to see if we can recover and recover essentially is what we did. Granted, the low clocked in at 151.80, but we managed to actually get back above that 153 level and close above it again. We closed at 154.07. So for remainder of the week, for things to look, in my opinion, the most bullish, right? So I'm glad that we got the IWM or small caps on board today. For things to look really bullish going forward, we need to sort of hold that 153 ground, right? So if we can do that, Close out the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter. If we can do that, more than likely we're going to retest 160, and then we'll see if time number eight is the charm. So again, this is only about a five-month chart. If you take a, a longer-term view going back to two years, and I've covered this in past videos, you'll see that the IWM have actually tried to penetrate that 160 level, this black line here. We can call that resistance. Actually, let me just do it and show you. We've tried to do it about... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe there's another time. I, I may have uh, deleted an arrow somewhere along the way. But we've tried to do it about uh, six to seven times, which is a lot. So this time, again, if we can hold that 153 mark, I think we're going to make another attempt. And I think this might be the one to do it. But I did say it the last time and the time before, so who knows. But uh, this time around, if we can hold 150, granted, we got that pullback. But the pullback has not been extreme, right? It's been like a light pullback, maybe sort of like uh, gearing up for that overshoot. So right now, if we can get to 157, more than likely we're going to retest 160. And if we break, that is, uh, for me, the ultimate the ultimate bullish sign in the market. What else?
And then we have to go PHAS daily chart uh, dating back to around uh, early 2019. But I do just want to focus in on price action here. Huge congrats to the bulls. You can see the stock is up about uh, north of 20. Uh, pardon, north of 24% on the day. It's up a little bit more in after hours, about 1.45%. I see a quote here in after hours of $4.91. So a little bit of movement in after hours. You can see here that a buyer stepped in. So once again, huge congrats to the bull. So what I'm seeing here is actually a stock for the most part that has been in decline since July of 2019. So from here, from a peak in July of around $13.95, the stock has declined, traded, side ba pardon, traded sideways for a bit, and then you have this break that occurred earlier in the year. It was very massive. Uh, and so for me, this here, this little pop today on 24%, is nothing, in my opinion, more than sort of a dead cat bounce. But maybe there's going to be more room for this stock to run heading into uh, the remainder of this week, possibly next week. What you want to pay attention to, as I've always stated, is how the stock opens up tomorrow, right? So we close at 484. If we open up above uh, 484, that's a good sign that the stock might actually want to run. If you see that the stock is selling off in pre-market and we open up below 484 and cannot get back above, more than likely this gap here of around uh, 385 will get filled, in my opinion, and that's my take. What else? And then we have to go RRD, a uh, daily chart dating back to November of 2018. But I definitely want to focus in on price action starting around May until present. So about four months. In my opinion, this is a very bullish setup in the making, providing, providing that there is continuation. So what would be continuation? Uh, well, heading into tomorrow, you definitely want to see the stock trade up above where it's at right now, which is 371. So if this stock can open up at like $3.80 and have that serve as the floor. I think you can easily see around uh, four, potentially even $5 heading into the remainder of this week, next week. So the key is the stock needs to break out of this resistance line right here. We can call that level 380. That should serve as the new floor heading forward. What else? And then you have to go HOV daily chart uh, dating back to around November of 2018. So about almost a year's worth of data stock is up about north of 20% on the day. So huge congrats to the bulls. Another stock in which I actually like the setup here. Uh, you can see we actually had this breakout that occurred today on confirming volume. Stock went as high as uh, $19.99. Very, very shy of $20 uh, to pull back to close at $19.76. Heading into tomorrow, if we can have a put a push and actually break today's high if we can trade up to around 20 20 dollars i can see this stock easily getting to around 22 so about two points left of upside with ticker hov providing that it can trade up uh to around 20 dollars if it can maintain this breakout here what else and then you have ticker tmdi daily chart dating back to april of 2018 but i definitely want to focus in more or less on price action towards the ending of last year till present stock is off about 42% on the day. You can see this gap down here on confirm, uh, pardon, on confirming volume, a close of a dollar and 18 cents today's low clocked in at 114. So we haven't, we haven't closed too far off of the lows of today. So heading into tomorrow, considering this move, considering the volume, considering where we closed, there's a potential that this selling will continue into tomorrow and we're going to retest uh, all-time lows of around uh, 105. Potentially, you're going to get a bounce there, but not looking so good with ticker TMDI. Staying away from stocks that are off about 40% in one day. What else? And then there's ticker ECOR daily chart, uh, another stock that's off hugely on the day, off about 23.51%. Uh, confirming volume, I see a quote here of, Two dollars and fifty seven cents. The low clocked in at two fifty one. So heading into tomorrow, uh, if you're going to ask yourself, or if you're asking yourself whether or not the selling has subsided, uh, you want to pay attention to obviously where the stock opens up. If it opens up below two fifty one, not a good sign. If it opens up above and can maintain that uh, move, that would be good. But paying attention to where the stock opens up, also paying attention to today's low of two fifty one. If we take that out, chances are there's going to be a bit more selling um and it doesn't seem as though selling is drying up anytime soon when you take into account the actual range uh, just a few uh trading days ago this stock was actually trading at around uh 
close to six bucks. Now you see it here at $2.51, uh, pardon, $2.57. So heading into tomorrow, pay attention to the open as well as today's low of $2.51. If we open up below today's close, if we take out the low of today, uh, that's not a good sign. What else? And then there's ticker LCI. This is actually an hourly chart. And let's just focus in on what happened today after this gap down. Here you can see stock gap down, but quickly buyer stepped in, drove the price of the stock up, uh, I would say within the first hour of trading or so, pull back slightly and it seems as though we traded sideways for the last two to three hours of trading. Close at $11.47. This line that I just drew here is what you wanna pay attention to heading into tomorrow. Uh, the low uh, clocks in at around uh, $11.33. So use that as a reference point if we Break below that, more than likely you're going to revisit today's low of around $10.94. However, if we can stay above here, you at minimum have the potential to run. I'm not quite sure if you'll fill this gap here to $13.75 anytime soon, but you can potentially run to like $12 or $12.50 before the selling continues. So pay attention again to that reference point of around $11.33, exactly where the market has been trading sideways, I would say, for the last uh, two, three hours of trading. And that's my take on ticker LCI. What else? And then we have ticker JE daily chart. Again, let's just focus in on price action from August to present. So about uh, close to two months of trading activity, you had this gap down here, a few days of selling, you had a bit of consolidation, a move up consolidation. And today you saw that breakout with confirming volume here. You can say this, you can see rather that the stock broke out. Uh, we can call that breakout level around a dollar and sixty-five cents. So it actually sustained that move again with confirming volume closed at one eighty-six. There's a gap here to be filled at three dollars and eight cents, and it seems as though uh, the stock might be gunning for that gap. So will it be filled? Well, you want to monitor how the stock actually trades up, and for me, I'd be paying attention to uh, what it does tomorrow. So today, the high clocked in at one eighty-eight. Being that we closed at 186, we closed relatively close to today's high. That's actually a decent sign. Heading into tomorrow, you want to ensure that the stock actually trades up above 186. Retest that minimum, that 188 level, and actually pierces through it. If we can sustain a break above today's high of 188, that's your sign that this ticker is actually moving in the right direction. What else? All right, so let's uh, wrap it up and round it out with ticker VXRT daily chart dating back to around March of 2019. Uh, stock is off north of 40% on the day. So a huge move to the downside for me. For me, uh, the writing was on the wall a few days ago around here when the stock actually penetrated support that has held uh, for around uh, five or six months and that support level was around 56 cents. So again, that was the writing on the wall for me. Uh, had I have been in this stock, I would have gotten out around here when it broke support of around uh, 56 cents. So today that move continued off about 40%, uh, actually hitting all time lows, so they around 25 cents. Got a little bit of a bounce to close at 30 cents. All of this happening on above average volume. So for me, one, I don't like to trade stocks that are trading around 30 cents. Uh, they're too volatile. And there are actually other stocks that can offer you up a better bang for your buck. This isn't it. But um, but that's just my take. So one, not a fan because it's a penny stock. Uh, also not a fan because it's trading at all-time lows, not 52-week lows, but all-time lows. So, uh, and again, we were not too far off of all-time lows of around 25 cents. So heading into tomorrow, you want to know whether or not the damage is done. You want to pay attention to how it opens up. If we open up below 30 cents and we take out 25 cents, which is today's low, chances are the stock is going to drift lower. And even if you get your dead cat bounces, meaning if you get those days of that 15, 20, 30% rally, uh, it's clear that the overall trend, if you look at a longer term chart, uh, let me see if I can zoom out, you can see the overall trend is to the downside, right? So you don't want to jump into stocks that are doing this. You want to jump into stocks that are going in the opposite direction, uptrend, not a downtrend. Anyway, that's my take. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. What did you think about my analysis? That's the first thing too. I do videos Monday through Friday. So if you want to ensure that you do not miss any 
ensure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. Uh, subscribes have, uh, they, they slowed for a bit, kind of had an uptick. Uh, we're trying to get to 2000 at uh, before years end. So if you subscribe, it would mean the world to us here. And uh, lastly, lastly, my friend, I've been training for a well over 15. That's one five years. If you think you can learn anything from me, then definitely head on over to our website, shortmeetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. I <laughs>